A pleasant good morning to each one of you. Welcome to our God's Word for today, devotional. Let me read to us our text today in Mark chapter 14, verses 26 to 31. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all fall away, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, even though they all fall away, I will not. And Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said emphatically, If I must die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said the same. One of the truth, hard truths that Jesus has said to his disciples is that every one of them will fail. You will all fall away. After their Passover feast at that upper room, they returned to the Mount of Olives, where they have spent every night this week. The Garden of Gethsemane sits on the west side with the Mount of Olives at the intersection of the two roads that come east of the Jerusalem. This was the place that they continued to hang out. Then, Jesus pronounced to them that they will all fall away. Nobody will remain, but they will all fall away. This statement, fall away, is taken from the Greek root word, skandalizo, where the word scandal comes from in English. In other words, they will morally stumble and ultimately sin against the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the same term used to describe the rocky ground in the parable of the sower that Jesus related to them. In that parable, Jesus said, the ones who, when they hear the word immediately, receive it with joy, and they have no root in themselves but endure for a while. Then, when tribulation or persecution arises, on account of the word, immediately they fall away. Surely the disciples have heard Jesus' words and agree with them. They spent with Jesus three years of seeing his miracles, hearing him teaching, but their roots are still too shallow so that they will give in during trials and persecutions. And Jesus saw it. Jesus has quoted Zechariah 13, verse 7 to 9, that when the shepherd is stricken, the sheep will be scattered, applying this to what will happen to the disciples. Because later, they will witness Jesus being arrested, and he will be like a powerless lamb being tortured in a cruel and excruciating death. So in fear, they will be scattered. They will be like sheep. When seeing a lion attacking the shepherd, they will be running away for safety. But as the good shepherd, Jesus knows his sheep. John 10 verse 14 says that, I know my sheep and they know me. The sheep knows the good shepherd especially his voice, and he will follow him. Yes, they may be scattered for a while, but for those who belong to Jesus truly, they will always return to him. Christians are not expected that they will be perfect. They may fail the Lord Jesus Christ, but their relationship is not based on their goodness, but on what God has done, what Christ has done at the cross. God is our compassionate father as Psalm 103 verse 13 14 says as a father shows compassion to his children so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him for he knows our frame he remembers that we are dust the Lord expects that we will fail because we are made of dust he knows our frail frame but Jesus will always initiate that these disciples will be returned to him, that they will be revived. Jesus instructed them that they are going to meet him in Galilee after he will be raised, raised up, talking about his resurrection. Later on, we will know that Jesus met with the seven of his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, otherwise known as the Sea of Galilee. And this story is elaborated in John chapter 21. And it was also here that Jesus restored Peter 
who went away from him as well. It was Peter among the disciples who was very vocal. He was very overconfident. Peter rejected Jesus' warning. He must be sincere, but he was just overly confident to trust his own flesh. Jesus warns Peter that Satan will shift him like wheat in Luke 22, verse 31. But Jesus prays that although Peter's courage may fail at this time, his faith won't, and that Peter will be able to use this experience to give courage to the other disciples. And this was what Luke accounted in Luke chapter 22, verse 31 and 32. Remember, Peter is very impulsive among the disciples. He said that if everyone will go away, I won't. I'm willing to die with you. I believe he was sincere, but he was just overestimating about his confidence and courage. He was restored by the Lord for certain. He was down, but he was not totally abandoned by the Lord Jesus Christ. He sinned, but he was restored. And during the time that he betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ for three times, the Lord Jesus Christ looked at him and he wept bitterly and he sincerely um, repented of his sins and he was so grieved inside that he sinned against his God. But when he met the Lord Jesus Christ, he was restored. And we know that when the Holy Spirit came during the Pentecost, he restored Peter because Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. And he preached and there were 3,000 souls that were added. And they were not afraid about the warning, the threatenings of the religious leaders that they will not speak about the gospel, about the Lord Jesus Christ. Peter was very courageous along with his friends, James and John. And we know that it's not because of Peter, but because of the Holy Spirit. The story of Peter's recovery, is our story should be, that no need to um, be grieved that we don't have hope when we fail God. Because God has given us hope that we could bounce back. No failure needs to be final. If you have failed the Lord because you promised the Lord many times over and still you are failing God. God understands our frame. That we are made of dust. And you don't need to trust of yourself. You trust the Holy Spirit who can give you the victory. Yes, we may fail, but no failure needs to be final. There's always a place for us to bounce back and recover and be restored so that the end of our lives should be better than the beginning. How we grow and mature through those failings and and uh, imperfections that we did in the past matters. And that is what God wants us to uh, remember today, that he's the God who can recover us, who can restore us. There's no situation in our lives where we are so deep in sin, or we are so engrossed in, in, in a miry clay of sin and despair that God cannot recover us. His hands or arms are too long to stretch in order to take us where we are in our down moments of our lives, during the lowest moment of our lives. May the gospel will encourage us today that in Christ we can always hope for the best. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for this particular passage that we have read and studied today. Lord, you don't expect that the disciples will be perfect. You have chosen them and they are not perfect people. They were gullible people. They failed the Lord Jesus Christ. Peter failed him, but he came out from his failure a very strong, courageous disciple who preached boldly about the Lord Jesus Christ during Pentecost. 
and thank you that we can always believe and hope that there's always that glimmer of light at the end of the tunnel where we can recover and restore our walk with you should we fail Lord. And I pray dear Father that you will continue to guide us that we will not wallow in the miry clay of failure but we'll always bounce back recover ourselves to serve you in a greater capacity Lord. It's only by the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.